What's up and welcome back to Sunnydale Live. I'm Jonathan and today's episode, well, I think unlike just about, no, incredibly unlike every other episode of Buffy and every other episode of Angel, this episode stands alone. Mainly because it has a certain, what's what's the word I'm looking for? A certain uh, owenosity to it that none of the other episodes possess. Never kill a boy on the first date. I love that, that line where Xander, this is later on in the episode, where Xander's just like, well, I'll admit, Owen has a certain Owenosity to him. It just, it's just so random, and it's just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but uh, never kill a boy on the first date. The first time on the show where Buffy has a love interest who's not Angel, because it's kind of been hitting at Angel, but nothing's really happened there yet. Um, it's the first episode, once we get into the season, that harkens back to the overall story. It's the first time the Master reappears um, and starts moving that storyline forward. Because we had a couple filler episodes, but this one is back on track to being um, the core story, the main, the main story for the season. And in my estimation, out of the first five episodes, it's the third best. I, I love The Witch. I love Teacher's Pet. I think this one's better. I think it it's a stronger episode. Certainly, out of all of season one, probably has the most quotable lines in this episode. There's so many things in there that just stay rattling around in your head, for, even for years later. Um, Owen Ossity being one of them. Uh, the beginning of the episode is pretty interesting. This is Buffy slaying a vampire, being punny, and Giles criticizing her for it. Uh, he's like, you just stay and move on, stay and move on. You're spending too much time. You're you're playing basically like you're playing with your food is what he's saying. At, like just kill and move on. Uh, and then he finds this ring in the ashes of one of the vampires and he picks it up and she's like, oh yeah, that's great. I'll slay them and you pawn their stuff. It's just it's so it, this episode is more witty than most of the other episodes in season one. It's really well done. Um, Giles tries to figure out what the mark is, but can't. Buffy's like, oh, I've seen that before, and figures out it's the brother of Aurelius. And so Giles then starts going into research mode. And while while they're discussing it, though, this dude comes in, and Giles immediately is like, what are you doing in here? Why do you want to be in here? And he's like, I wanted to check out a book. Lost my Emily, Emily Dickinson. And Buffy's like, Giles, this is a library. People come in here and read sometimes. And it just got me thinking, like, Giles had such an adverse reaction to him coming in, and I get it. They were in the middle of discussing vampire slayer stuff. He was preoccupied. I could understand why he'd be a little like, "What did you? Hear? What did you hear? What do you know?" Ah! But at the same time, it's just like, how unfrequent do like how infrequent is it for people to come in and check out a book in the school library? Are these Sunnydale students like that illiterate? <laughs> Is this a real problem at the school that nobody there reads? And the one dude who's like, hey, let me check out a book, makes the librarian spit out? I worry about the literacy rates in the school. It's now a genuine concern of mine. Um, Buffy just kind of throws herself at him, pretends she reads Emily Dickinson, just trying way too hard to get his attention. And she's just like, oh, he's so owen -y. And she tells Willow, and Willow's like, oh, my God, Owen talked to you? He's so broody. How did you get him to talk to you? And it's just like, oh, my God. this the, Xander, I am the only person who makes sense to me, Xander, because Xander's like, he's a loser. Like, what are you guys talking about? Um, I do love, though, that when Willow and Buffy sit down, Xander's like, hey, Buff, how the slaying go last night? And there's like, Xander, because no one's supposed to know this, he's a slayer. So then he changes it to, I met how the laying la No, no, that's worse. <laughs> Just like, oh my God. Why do you speak? Why do you talk, Xander? Oh. I don't even know what to say to the man. That was painful. It's very painful. Xander should, should stop talking for a while. He's clearly not good at it. Um, Buffy goes and tries to sit next to Owen. Cordelia knocks her over um, and then asks Owen on a date to the bronze. Owen then invites Buffy and turns it into a date with Buffy. Cordelia is just pissed. I do love that Cordelia and Buffy are fighting over Owen. And it's just like, why? <laughs> 
he's he's such a weird dude but they're both like obsessed with him it's a little alarming um giles figures out about the anointed one and tells buffy like out of the ashes of the five the one will rise and it's supposed to happen tonight you can't go on this date you have to you have to do your job you have to do your destiny we got to go find and stop this anointed one he's a powerful player for the master and we can't let him we can't let him rise so she blows off the date and they're at the cemetery just waiting but there's no fresh graves nothing happens so finally she's just like okay like nothing's happening can i go and he's like yeah, yeah leave and so she rushes to the bronze and when she gets there cordelia and owen are dancing buffy's just heartbroken <laughs> she leaves um and then we see a bus driving right and on the bus there's this creepy dude who keeps saying weird scripture and he's threatening this little kid and threatening everybody else and then the bus almost hits a vampire and they all die and it's like oh shit maybe giles was right and the next day at school xander's trying to cheer buffy up and, and also kind of like reprimanding her because like you should have just went and talked to him like he clearly wanted to see you why did he just leave just because he's dancing with Cordelia doesn't mean anything. But then before he can even finish his thought, Owen shows up and <laughs> I'm just like Buffy essentially has a secret identity. And yet she is so bad at lying. He's like, why didn't you come last night? And Buffy's like, oh, um, well, what had happened was like my watch broke and we don't have any clocks at the house. So I, I just didn't know what time it was or even what day it was. And Xander's just looking at her like, what? And then Owen just kind of like laughs and is like, oh, you know, I, I hate when that happens. And he lends her his watch and even like shows her how to time the time. It's like, okay, this is till the time. And it's like, okay, this is this is kind of adorable. Like this, this I can give him. This is cute. This is funny. Like he's trying and it's like, okay, I can see that working out. It's so the first time on the episode where I'm like, I kind of think that the relationship makes sense. Xander's clearly jealous, and he looks at his little toy watch, and he's all sad. Um, but Buffy, that night, you know, she's getting ready. Well, she, she makes sure Giles doesn't eat her, closes that door real quick, and then goes home and gets ready. And I always I always defend Xander, saying, like, ah, people give him a hard time. He's a good guy. They overestimate. This episode always, I'm like, Xander, come on. So he's trying to sabotage the date. Okay, whatever. Like getting to wear an overcoat and all that stuff. But then when she's getting changed, he's trying to watch her through the mirror. And it's like, dude, that's pervy. You don't know. That's your friend. What are you doing? I've always, I'm every time I watch this episode, I always get very disappointed in him for that. That's crossing the line. Um, but there's a knock at the door. Buffy runs down, excited to see Owen. And it's Giles. Giles shows up and he's like, I was right. Look at this bus crash. And he tries to explain it and Buffy blows him off. And then Owen shows up and he's like, why is the librarian here? And she's like, oh, overdue book. Like, and he's like, yes, Missy. And you're not getting off that easy. And so Xander Willow take Owen away. And they're just like, Xander's like, uh, she doesn't like to dance, but it's too late to do anything. She doesn't like to kiss. She doesn't like it when you look at her. You should avoid all these things. And Willow's like, Xander, stop. I just, every time I see that, I'm just like, oh my God. He's trying way too hard to sabotage this relationship. And it's like, dude, you're supposed to be her friend. What are you doing? People point to all these different episodes of like, oh, Xander's a shitty person because of X, Y, and Z. To me, this is this is the only episode really, or well, one of the few episodes really, where you could be like, yeah, Xander's kind of shitty. Everything he does in this episode is kind of shitty. Um... I do love, though, when Buffy goes, uh, I'm not going to be far. I'll have my beeper with me, which dates this show because nobody has beepers anymore. But she's like, if the apocalypse comes, beat me. And it's, just, it's such a classic line. Everyone knows that line. Just, this episode is full of those. And so they go off to the bronze and Giles is like, I'm going to the mortuary. I'm going to check out my hypothesis. And Willow's like, we should go with him. This It could be dangerous. And Zen is like, yeah, you're right. I don't trust that Owen guy. It's the eyes. And she's like, no, I mean Giles. And he's like, oh, Giles is gone. We can't. Knowledge is the most powerful weapon. Giles got to that. But he's just like, how is your argument for not going to help Giles being Giles is too far? He, he's already so far away. We'll never catch up to him. He left after Buffy. True, he took a car, Buffy, you know, and walked. But still, like, come on. <laughs> Xander's too much. 
um at the at the bronze um oh Owen and Buffy are dancing and then Cordelia comes up and he's like oh and you're all by yourself and he's like I'm with Buffy like he's literally dancing with Buffy oh well do you want to dance and he's like I'm still with Buffy like Cordelia, Buffy's like shoo Cordelia shoo it's just it's Cordelia's not used to like playing second fiddle to anyone especially someone who she seems as like a loser like Buffy it's it's amusing to see Cordelia get put in her place although personally I'm just like Buffy over Cordelia? Have you seen Cordelia Chase? She's gorgeous. I mean, Buffy's pretty gorgeous, too. Uh, And definitely at this point in time, Buffy definitely has a better personality. Cordelia's far too vain and vapid, which Owen points out to Buffy. He's like, there's more to life than dating, and I don't like girls who are only about dating and relationships. He's like, I want a girl with substance. And you see, like, when he's saying that, it really strikes a chord with Buffy because... She keeps looking at the pager and like, she's starting to feel guilty. Like maybe I should have, I should have went with Giles. That's my calling. That's my destiny. That's who I'm supposed to be. Instead, I'm being selfish and doing what I want to do. It's, you could tell it has an effect on him. Um, Meanwhile, as soon as Giles gets to the mortuary, he gets attacked. So he, she was thinking the right thing. Like she should have went to help Giles because he needs it. He ends up locking himself in a room and it's like, what's he going to do? And then Willow and Xander show up outside because Xander gave in and listened to Willow and he sends them to go get Buffy. But before they get there, Cordelia's telling her friends like, can you see how she's throwing herself at him? Yada, yada, yada. It's just like you were throwing yourself at him. You come off as desperate when you're like, you want to dance when he's dancing with somebody else. But she's like, it's just, there should be a law against it. And then Angel walks in and immediately she's like, hello, salty goodness. And then she's like, call an EMT because he's going to need some serious oxygen after through with it. Just her level of confidence. You got to give it to her. And she she storms after Angel, but he blows her off and goes to Buffy. She's just like, what the fuck is wrong with everybody? It, it really bothers her that all these guys are interested in Buffy and not her. And it, it You could tell it gets to her. Um, Angel tries to warn Buffy that there's something going on about the anointed and she needs to stop it and she blows him off Xander and Willow show up uh, Owen's like why are your friends said like oh we're dating but we should go on a double date and she's like no Owen and I are kind of Owen and I like everyone needs to leave me alone and then they're like well, what if we go to the mortuary and then she's like oh shit it's Giles so she blows off Owen but kisses him in front of Angel Angel gets all like kind of jealous and moody and stuff. And then they all go there. And by the time they get to the mortuary, Owen shows up right behind them. Cause he was like, well, I wanted to go. This sounds fun. Why can't I come? So she locks the three of them in a room in the office. She's like, I'll be right back. I got to go use the restroom, finds Giles. And they start looking for the religious dude because they think he's the anointed one. Turns out he's in the adjoining room with Xander, Willow and Owen. And he attacks them. So Buffy rushes there, attacks the dude. Um, Owen actually saves Buffy's life, but then gets hit against the the drawer. The same one I think that Giles was hiding in a little while ago, like these little pull-out drawers. Well, he gets hits his head against that and passes out. And then um, Buffy goes crazy and starts fighting the anointed one. Until Willow's like, Buffy, Owen's and Zender's like, shh, let, let her let her work. <laughs> and she throws him in the furnace and uh, Giles slams the door shut. And then Owen's like, what's going on? And she tries to play it off, but he's like, he wants nothing to do with her. He doesn't want to talk to her. He doesn't want her to walk her home. He just, he wants to be done with her. So Xander and Willow walk him home and Buffy's heartbroken. Giles tries to cheer her up, but she kind of just blows him off. But in, in Giles' defense, throughout this episode, he kept telling her and she kept ignoring him that dating someone who doesn't know about who you are and what you do is going to be difficult. It's going to have added challenges that normal relationships don't have. And if you tell him anything, you're just putting his life in danger. You're potentially putting yourself and the rest of our lives in danger because he could get involved and get us hurt or get himself hurt, which is kind of what happened this night. I mean, everything Giles said was kind of proven right. Um, but she doesn't want to hear it and you can't blame her. It goes back to the same kind of premise that they had on the movie that they kept home, uh, hammering home on the movie, which is Buffy just wants to be normal. She, she has this destiny. She has this larger than life fate. It was even hinted at in the first episode 
Like she knows that this is what she's supposed to do, but she doesn't want to. She wants to be a normal 16 year old girl who's just going to high school and talking to boys and living her life. And Owen, I think to a large part represents that he's this normal dude. And when she's with him, she's not, she's special because he sees her as special, but she's not extraordinary. She's not the slayer. She's not the chosen one. She's just a girl who likes a guy and is hanging out with a guy. Although, I mean, when you see the day when they're talking, uh, back when she's like looking at her page or like, I should be doing something, you could tell there's no chemistry between them. There's none because her life is so important and full of adventure and twists and turns. And by his own admission, his life is very dull and static. There's no chemistry. They have nothing in common. The relationship was never going to work. Um, but her being, because she's a slayer and all this did was just speed up the process of realizing it's not going to work. But the next day at school, Xander's even saying the same thing Giles says, although the reasoning's different. Giles was saying it to be like, you have to expect this. You have to understand dating is not going to be an easy thing for you. Um, Xander was saying it because he wants Buffy to date him, but their both thing was like anyone you date who doesn't know about who you are. You're going to have a hard time relating to them and you're going to have a hard time making that work. And it's a fair assessment. It's not one Buffy wants to hear, but it is a fair assessment. Uh, but then Owen comes up to Buffy and turns out he had fun. He's like, I want to do it again. He's like, last night was kind of weird for me, but I thought about it. And he's like, I want to walk down the street and get into bar fights with you. And I just, I want to go on adventures and I want to live life to the fullest. And Buffy's like, no, <laughs> she's like, that's, I'm not interested in that. I think we should just be friends, which is kind of, you know, a blow off. Like, I don't really want to be a friend, but I'm trying to be nice. And you could tell it hurts her to do it because she really liked him. She really wanted to make it work, but her whole life is danger. And part of the reason she liked him was because he was normal and he was quiet and he was peaceful. And she didn't have to be Buffy when she was with him. She could just be Buffy. <laughs> And him wanting to be dangerous and go out there and on adventures and all this stuff. It was put, it would put her in danger. It put himself in danger. It put her friends in danger. It put the world in danger. It just, it's, it wouldn't work. And also it's not what she wanted. It, it's kind of heartbreaking for her. You know, you can't help but feel bad for her that this is, that it didn't work out the way she wanted it to. Um, Giles sees her, sees this whole, witnesses this whole thing. And then is like, Explaining to her about that whether she believes it or not, he can actually understand. His He was 10 years old when his dad sat him down and was like, I'm a watcher and my father's a watcher and my grandfather, my great-grandfather. Like, this is this is who we are. We're watchers and you're going to be a watcher. And Giles is like, I had really definitive plans when I was 10. I was going to be a fighter pilot or maybe a grocer. <laughs> I love that line. But he's like, but I didn't want this. He was like, I wasn't like wanting to do the same thing my father did. And I wanted to be my own person and make my own choices. And that was in essence taken from me because I had this larger destiny. He leaves out the Ripper years, but I mean, I don't think she needs to know all that right now. But he's like, I, I had this destiny that I was called to. And, you know, there's, there's a burden to it when you're that young. I mean, he was 10, she was like 15, 16. I don't know when she, how long she was at her other high school before she was called, but 15, 16 years old, and then being called and told your whole life is planned out for you. You don't get to make those choices. You don't get to decide for yourself who you want to be or what you want to be. Destiny has decided for you. Fate has decided for you. And that's a heavy burden. And I think this is, it's clearly not the first time because I think, you know, getting expelled was kind of like, and losing her old friends and her old boyfriend and all that was kind of like, the first sign that life isn't going to be what you think it should be because of who you are. But this was definitely a reminder of no matter how normal you start to feel, you're still an outsider. You're still different. And you're never going to really fit in with people who you should be able to fit in with. It very, very much made her feel alienated and alone. And it's, it's kind of sad. 
Um, but that's not the end of the episode. The end of the episode is the little boy from the tr- the bus who the creepy guy who we thought was the anointed one was kind of threatening. Turns out he is the anointed one. And he arrives with the master because the end of the prophecy wasn't just out of the ashes of the five rises the one. But then the ending of it, because Giles knew all that, but the ending of it was the slayer will not know him and the slayer will not uh, stop it. And he will lead the slayer to her doom. So it sets up the back half of the season because the anointed one plays a large part in how this whole season and storyline ends. And Buffy did not stop him. She didn't know who he was and she didn't stop him. And the master got his way. The Order of Aurelius did their job, got the anointed one to the master, got the anointed one to the master. And now what happens next? It is a very, oh shit, ending. Um, And even though it's not the halfway point of the season, it's episode five, there's 12 episodes. So technically the next episode is the halfway point, but this one is kind of close to the halfway point. Like it's, it might as well be storytelling wise. It's kind of the midway point of the season. It's the big, it's the first big twist that changes the directory of the, of the season. We had the harvest and that failed. And then that storyline kind of went away, but the master didn't go away. And so now we set up the, what the rest of the season is going to be the prophecy and Buffy's doom as it were. Um, we'll, we'll learn later on, means her death but at this point just doom which we can infer means death and all of that is set up right here like i said this is it's in my estimation the third best episode so far and definitely the third most important episode it changes everything moving forward for well at least for the season uh the owen storyline is kind of throwaway we never see owen again but the other stuff that happened in this episode very much establishes the rest of the season and normally you would imagine that'd be in episode six, but they did it in episode five. But it's really good. Um, I, I love this show. And this is, this is like I said, has some of the more memorable lines, some of the more memorable moments, at least in the first season. Uh, but till next time, this is Sunny Day Live. I'm Jonathan. Give us legends.